Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Uh, a lot of you know I've been working on a Mark III based uh, shuttle design, so I thought I'd give you a little update as to where I am with that. Uh, this is the basic layout I've been working with. You can see the Mark III cockpit, nice Mark III hull, a uh, room for three extra crew to hang out in the cargo bay, uh, the ability to carry some crates with tools and other supplies so we could do some orbital construction uh, will be greatly needed, I guess. And service module tank is going to hold everything from uh, liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen for the fuel cells to uh, food, water, and oxygen for the crew to make their uh, endurance in orbit a lot greater than the old Shurukens. And we've got this old uh, engine mount out back that I guess we'll get to shortly after I decide to get rid of that uh, hull section. There it is. Anyway, and we're going to mount to it three RS-25 DEs. I figure that should be enough to actually uh, push something this big to orbit all on its own. It'll actually probably weigh less than the uh, actual space shuttle. But trying to deviate from an exact replica of that is what I was really trying to do. You know, I'm not very big on replicas, and this kind of seems replica-ish. Anyway, uh, getting the wing design right... Um, is something that is absolutely mind-bogglingly difficult because it has to look right or I'm, I'm not going to want to put it on the internet for all of you. It also has to fly. That's kind of the main uh, objective here <laughs> is something that flies well tends to also look pretty good and finding that happy medium has been absolutely horrible. So uh, I'm not a hundred percent on this design as of yet, but it is getting closer, I have to say. Um, I may go back and alter this wing design. I do like the tapered edges there, and they do help with stability, but mostly at lower speeds. It's the tailplane sections that have been giving me a real um, headache. <laughs> There's no good place to mount them when you've got such a short tail end behind the cargo bay, and while I do like the... Uh, the twin tailed design in theory, uh, it, it doesn't come together very well here. And because there's space like this, making a, uh, a twin surface air brake like I've had on all the Shuruken designs uh, is really, really difficult. They both, all four flaps tend to want to fold inward, which makes things horrendously awkward. But um, this is actually the best looking design that I've had thus far, now that I've got something kind of figured out there on the tailplane. So uh, we do need to add an orbital maneuvering system. I thought, hey, why not use the actual orbiting, orbital maneuvering system as the part is listed here. We're going to have to angle them in to fire through the center of mass, which is, of course going to be a little different by the time we get there. Uh, we'll probably have to figure out something for those fuel tanks. And making sure that the two tanks to which they are attached are highly pressurized is uh, another big one. Uh, they are, in fact, although that'll give us some problems later. FAR is generally fairly happy with this. We've got some down angle issues um, based on our speed and altitude. It looks like it's going to be a consistent problem, but let's take it outside and see how it flies. <laughs> we just put enough liquid hydrogen in the wing sections to get us airborne. I don't plan on it staying there, but uh, those... AJ-10, uh, service propulsion, or uh, orbital pro orbital maneuvering engines are not firing. They're saying feed pressure too low, which is confounding. And that uh, down angle issue is very, very pronounced. That's what this random pitching up is doing. This thing really, really, really just wants to throw its nose to the sky. Um, and that's going to be a huge problem, especially if you're trying to re-enter the atmosphere. Uh, keeping your nose up, not such a bad thing trying to stall uh, under any kind of normal flight is a very, very bad thing. So there's a lot of me trying to fight this nose up and uh, build up some speed, because this thing just really wanted to walk in belly first the entire time. You get some speed under it, you're able to pull up and kind of gently cruise here now that we're at a really, really low speed, but uh, not actually slow enough. Yeah, the 1.1.3 wheel bounce. Let's take this back into the hangar and poke at it some more. So generally, I think this is an issue with the uh, 
center of mass, uh, center of lift being offset. We're also going to ditch those engines in favor of two AJ10-118Ks, super reliable engines. Uh, actually, more thrust and unlimited ignitions instead of 50 ignitions. It does give us a little more room to maneuver. Uh, so let's take it outside and see if some of these weight balance wing fixture things I actually shifted the wings um, forward a little bit or backward a little bit. There we go. It rolls nice. It will just uh, pitch it on over and Immelman maneuver. Try to roll out. There we go. And nose up. Yeah. It's still a thing. Unfortunately, uh, it is a lot more manageable uh, than it was before. I can actually fly this thing, but um, can't do it in time warp, which is a big bummer really just for me because these re-entries tend to take a very, very long time. And there's me just uh, getting a happy screenshot. And then just in the process of doing that, it pitched its nose all the way up and stalled us out. So we're just going to angle towards the ground. Yep, and that's in time warp. It just shoots straight up. This is a problem. So we're we're not quite there with this design just yet. It's going to need some tweaking. It's going to need some extra time on this simulation, definitely. Because uh, seeing if it will smash itself to bits when you try to put it on a runway uh, is certainly one of the key parts of this phase of testing. Well, runway being the operative word, we're going to loop around and uh, try to hit this little runway right over here. We'll just uh, mash on those rudders and try to side slip it in. But that nose up thing does kind of keep it airborne at low altitudes here, long enough to get that speed really, really low. There's a nice gentle touchdown, key up the brakes. Not too bad, let's get it back inside. So the last thing that I really wanted to kind of touch up with this is maybe give it a little more uh, stability on that um, pitch axis. So I'm going to add another set of all moving parts back here for future testing. But like I said, this design is not quite done. It does need some more work. So we'll probably touch back in on this at a later date. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.